it's a hurtful thing, man, when you feel like, you know, nobody wants you. When you feel like nobody wants to rock with you. You know what I'm saying? Every time you look up, somebody mean mugging you, somebody staring you down, they giving you the evil eye or the laser eyes, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 um, how do they say? They side looking at you, they side, you know how I'm saying? People look at you and they roll your eyes to the side, right? They giving you all these deaf stares, right? Nobody wants to deal with you. Nobody will even come over and talk to you, right? They don't want no parts of you. That's a real hurtful place to be when nobody wants to have nothing to do with you. And of course, the people will be like, well, man, obviously it's something they did. Well, what did they do? What was they involved in? Who was they around? You know, what kind of stuff are they dealing with? And it doesn't necessarily have to be any of those. You know what I'm saying? It can be something that was given to you, was assigned to you, was appointed to you. You were called to do it by someone in a higher power or authority than you. And so when you go to do that thing, even reluctant, you know, you may not want to do it. You have no desire. You never saw yourself doing that thing. But because now you find yourself in the situation, this is your circumstances. This is the outcome. What do you do, right? When it seems like nobody wants you. Nobody is rocking with you. How do you handle that situation? And, 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 and how do you continue to keep going having the right attitude? I'm sure you can relate at one time or another being in a job that you did not like. But you had to be there because you needed the money or you know you needed that job at the time until you could get from you know a job to b job you did and you didn't like the job you didn't like the commute you didn't like the type of work you did you didn't like how much you pay you were receiving you didn't like the people that you had to work around there's a whole plethora of reasons why you may not have liked where you were right maybe you didn't like the position you were in or, or the people that were over you, your supervisors. Maybe you were in a supervisor position and you didn't like the people that was under you. <laughs> you dig? But I'm sure everybody can relate, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's where you live, right? Whether it's where you worship. I'm sure we have all been in that situation where we have been somewhere where we did not want to be doing something that we did not want to do and that we necessarily didn't have a choice over. You dig? Okay, in the book of Mark, the second chapter and the 14th verse, it reads, hold on y'all, let me get my glasses real quick. Y'all know my prescription has changed, so, you know, uh, I got reading glasses now, y'all, so I gotta put on my reading glasses. <laughs> when I go to read, you dig? The scripture is coming out of Mark, second chapter, the 14th verse, and it says, and as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of customs, tax collector. And he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him, you dig? So listen, for those of y'all out there that feel like nobody wants you, you're feeling like you're in a place where nobody rocks with you, nobody wants to deal with you, you're ostracized, you're pushed aside, you know, people treat you bad, you know what I'm saying? And it's not because you got a bad attitude, it's not because of who you are, it, it may be because of, you know, who you work for, it may be the position that you hold, you know, um, People get bent out of shape about certain things. And sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with you personally. It may have to do with, again, your surroundings. It may have to do with the company you work for. It may have to do with the position that you hold. It may have to do with some kind of authority or a power that you may have over them or their lives. But even when people treat you bad, and make you feel like you're unwanted, Jesus will come along and say, hey, brother, 
hey, sister, come follow me. But this is why I thank God for Jesus. This is why I thank him that he sent his son to die for me. You know what I'm saying? I know he's, he sent his son to die for all of us, but I'm making the declaration that I know that he sent his son to die for me. You know why? Because I'm yet still here being able to share this word with you. I'm yet still here. I didn't have to be here, right? But he saw fit to call me. Yeah, see, there was a time in my life where I felt like nobody wanted me. I didn't feel like nobody wanted me. Nobody would rock with me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody messed with me. Nobody had nothing to do with me. But even though I felt like that, it was the master's call. It was the master's call to say, hey, LeVon, hey man, come on. I got to work for you. Come on, follow me. Now, I had a job and everything. I had something that I was doing. But when God called me, guess what? His calling took priority over what I was doing. His calling took first place, right? It was the most important thing. So when God calls you, sometimes you got to leave what you're doing. You got to pick up and you got to go. It's not necessarily up to us. Sure, we have the decision. We have the free will. We can make the choice of whether to go or not. But I'm telling you, most of the time, when you choose not to be obedient to God, it's going to work out not in your favor. It's going to be disastrous. In the end, you're not going to win, right? Obedience is better than sacrifice. And when God calls us, that's when we need to hear the call, heed the call, and hold on to the call. I'll say one more time. We need to hear the call, heed the call, and then hold on to the call, right? Because once we hear it, immediately the enemies are going to try to come and take it away from us. But we got to heed what we heard. We got to prioritize that thing that we heard, and we got to make sure that we put it in its proper place. Because we can hear something and that which we hear, if we don't properly place it, we'll lose it. You dig? So we have to properly place. That's prioritizing that which we have heard, right? So when we hear it, once we are sure of what we heard, we know what we've heard. There's no doubt in our mind what we've heard, right? Once we hear it, we got to hold on to it. We got to hold on to it for dear life. We got to hold on to it like it's our last dollar. Literally, we got to hold on to what we've heard. And after holding on to what we've heard, right, then we have to, you know, once we, 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 we've adhered to it, right, we got to hold on to it. It's so important. Once we hear it, you have to adhere to it, right? You have to do what you've heard. See, a lot of times we'll hear something and then we don't do it. We'll put it off. We'll make excuses. We'll, we'll, you know, prioritize other things that are more important that we think. And then we won't adhere to the very thing that we heard. And when we go back and be crying to God, God, I don't understand. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? You know, this isn't working. I've been praying. I've been doing this. God will say, did you adhere? to the very thing that you heard. Yeah. Did you adhere to it? In other words, did you do it? It's one thing to hear it and it's good that you heard. And I'm glad that you held on to it. You held on to what you heard. But once you heard it and you held on to it, did you do the very thing that you heard that you were supposed to do? So I'm just glad, man. I'm so thankful you dig because God doesn't leave us where we don't want to be. He doesn't leave us drowning. He doesn't leave us depressed. He doesn't leave us just sulking, right, in sin. God will come and he will see about us. And then he will call us. Hey, come on, follow me. I got a great work for you. Hey, come on, follow me. I got something that's way more important and bigger for you to do. Hey, come on, follow me. You dig? I got to work for you. 
I got a job for you to do. Yeah, I got something for you to do, right? And it's even better than that what you're doing right now. But I need you to come on, follow me. I need you to fulfill the role that I have called for you to fulfill from the beginning of time right? I predestined you for work, but I need you to answer the call. And in order for you to answer the call, you got to answer the call unto me. You have to receive me as Lord and Savior. You have to receive me as a Christ. And then once you receive me as your Christ, then you can answer the call and assignment that I've already predestined for you. Because I want you. I'll accept you. When others turn you away and others don't want nothing to do with you, I'll accept you and I got to work for you, right? I have a love for you because I created you. And when others push you away, I won't push you away as you, long as you serve me, as long as you love me and worship me, as long as you call unto me, as long as you come unto me, right? I'll always accept you and I'll never push you away. Y'all know how family do, right? Family will cut you off quick. If you don't capitulate to their tune, if you don't march to their beat and do the things that they want you to do, family members are some of the quickest ones to cut you at the neck and the knees. You dig? Oh, they running with that crew over there? Oh, we'll see. If you're going to be hanging with them, then we're we going to have to cut you off. Or, oh, oh, you dating her over there? Oh, no, no, no. So you can't date. No, that's not going to happen. You can't date them. If you're going to date them, then check this out. We're going to cut you out of the wheel. We're going to disinherit you. We're not going to accept you. And we're going to act like you no longer exist in a part of this family. Yeah, that's how family would do you sometimes. And friends would do you the same way. You know, you have this crew. You have this clique that you've been hanging with for as long as you can remember. But now all of a sudden you decide that you don't want to do the same things that they're doing you're doing something else over here, right? And because you decided to do this over here and because they're not in agreement with you or they're not in agreement with what you're doing, all of a sudden they decide they want to cut you off. All of a sudden they decide that you are no longer acceptable in our circles. You're no longer able to hang with us because we don't like what you're doing. We don't like how you have turned your back on us to go do that. We don't like the decision that you've made to leave us and go do this. But this is how family does. This is how friends does when they really don't have your back. You dig? They just want you to capitulate to what they want. And the, the moment you decide to go against the grain, to go a different route, to go upstream, all of a sudden, down with the ax. So when we hear the call, Let's adhere, right? Let's hear, let's adhere, and let's hold on to the very thing that God is calling for us to do. So I just want to come on real quick and just encourage you, right, to remain faithful, keep your ears open because God is always talking, right? And if you hear God when he's talking, right, make sure that you adhere to whatever you heard. Hold on to it. Don't lose it because the devil will come, come try to steal it, right? Once you hear it, he'll come and try to steal it. So hold on to what you heard and then adhere to it. Do the very thing that you've heard, you dig? Your man, LeVon, be blessed on today. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you hit that bell notification so you're always notified whenever I upload content. Please, please like this video and share this video on all your platforms. I'll see you in the next video. One love, your man, LeVon.